Welcome to the Fright Flicks channel and the Killer Theories Scream Queens review. My name is Nate, your host this week, taking a look at episode 9 of season 1, uh, an episode called Ghost Stories, which, right off the bat, I'll tell you, I thought it was great. Scream Queens, for me, works best when it focuses on the characters and sort of revels in the ridiculous, funny dialogue. This was one of those episodes for me. The funnier a Scream Queens is, the more I relax and enjoy it, and the less I'm studying it for clues, because I'll get into this a little bit later. The clues aspect of it, the, uh, the ongoing mystery, it's wearing a little thin if they didn't have so many really awesome characters. I don't know that this show would be nearly as good as it is. In any event, let's talk ghost stories. This episode is set the night before campus is being closed and everybody is being kicked off campus. The Red Devil is finally... Finally, there was a proper, real-world response to all this violence, which, I mean, to be fair, this isn't that kind of show that necessitates a real-world response. But every once in a while, them actually doing something that makes sense in the real world is sort of welcome. So the, the campus is being shut down. Everybody is packing, getting ready to leave. The Red Devils, plural, are out in force, and bodies drop. This was... Uh, this was had one of the highest body counts for, like, real characters. Yes, there was the grungy trucker guy that gets killed. He was a cast-off. But there were three other deaths that were um, for regular cast members. So that's all pretty big. And um, at the end, the final death there, where Hester gets thrown down the stairs by Chanel, I would say she's dead. It's She seemed pretty dead to me, but... Who knows with this uh, with this show? So I'm going to say R.I.P. Hester, but I, I can dig it if somebody is going to put a question mark or an asterisk next to that until, until she has a memorial service. But you know what? Even on this show, memorial service isn't, doesn't really mean that you're actually dead. Although it seems like Earl Grey is dead for good and uh, Boone, uh, R.I.P. Boone, um, he was in the first episode, and uh, the pilot, and he was so good and so funny, and his chemistry with Chad was so great. And he's gone for a long period of time. It was so welcome to see him back, but I guess uh, shine brightly and snuff out early, because Boone is dead yet again. This time, I feel it's for real. But enough about the dead for now. Let's focus on the living. Several really good performances this episode. Um, Niecy Nash, funny as always. In the early episodes of Scream Queens, she really sparkled and stood out as a high point. Now, I feel that an enough other cast members have raised their game where she's as funny as she always was. She just doesn't stand out as much as she used to because uh, this episode in particular, Billy Lord, Chanel number 3, Definitely my favorite of the Chanel's, and uh, she was particularly funny this episode, but she's been coming along. Um, also, later on, I'm going to discuss uh, an ongoing killer theory Mike and I have about Chanel number three. Uh, this episode was very heavy on Chad Redwell, and the track record for this show seems to be the more Chad is in the episode, the better the episode is. For a show called Scream Queens, he easily is the Scream Queen MVP of the year. He just, he kills it every single scene. This particular episode, he got several scenes to really just flex his comedic muscles in one-on-one -on -one exchanges. Each and every time, Glenn Powell is money in the bank as this character. So... Uh, also, uh, I'll get more into this in Killer Theories, I, I think Chad can be 100% safely crossed off the suspect list. He seems to be, as I've maintained for weeks and weeks now, Chad seems like the only guy, the only person on the show that is not a suspect in one murder or another. 
Not a lot of Jamie Lee Curtis this episode, unfortunately, but she always maximizes her screen time, her reaction shots, her one-liners. She's awesome. She's been one of the high points of the show from the beginning, and she's still bringing it each and every episode, so she was definitely a high point in this. Um, Leah Michelle as Hester, this was a particularly good episode for her, I thought. She went she went over the line being unhinged, and uh, it really worked for the character. I like that. And I have to admit, finally, it took nine episodes, but finally Emma Roberts won me over. And uh, over the course of this episode, it was building, and then when she tosses Hester down the steps at the end, and then just so glibly, lampshade style, says, I feel I'll be able to redeem myself morally. Um, brilliant. Just so funny. So, uh, great work all around from the cast, uh, and there are a couple of uh, characters that were notable in their absence this week, but I'll get to that in the killer theories part. They did a, long, a lot of um, strong plot point stuff this episode, but it was most of it was hammering home things that we already knew, and by knew I mean strongly suspected or just figured out already. Um, and they reiterated a lot of stuff, but, you know, just once more, for the record, um, they strongly, strongly, strongly insinuate that Boone is one of the twin babies in the bathtub that was born that night 20 years ago. They don't actually confirm it. They skirt back from that, if you look at the details. They don't, it's not actually confirmed. They just lead you to believe that. But, uh... It seems like with uh, several things on this show, what what seems to be the case is actually the case. So Boone may be uh, one of the two twins, and he is murdered by the other twin. Apparently, you know this is this is how it looks. And my tone of voice is only stressing that just because it looks that way doesn't mean it is that way. But the other Red Devil, you know, kills Boone, sacrifices him. Uh, and stays in good with Gigi, um, still fully invested in the long-term plan for revenge. So um, it was stating it once more for the record, you know, which is fine. Um, as I, you know, mentioned earlier, the show really excels when it just relaxes and goes with the comedy. Um, the overall story for the season has been great in places and overall good, but it's definitely stretched out. This is starting to feel to me like maybe they had six or seven, seven, <laughs> seven tops. Maybe they had seven episodes worth of real story, and they sort of stretched it out to 12 just to make it a full season. And I don't really begrudge them that because the cast is strong enough to carry it, but... The story is wearing a little thin, and uh, the whodunit aspect, well, now we know two-thirds of the whodunit. Um, it's just uh, a matter of revealing who the, uh, who, the, who the other Red Devil is, the female twin, allegedly. In terms of review, overall, this was a solid episode, and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. We're heading into the last two weeks of the show next week. Um, will be uh, episode 10, and also next week we're going, Mike and I are going to do our final killer theories, where we make our final predictions, and then the following week is going to be the last two episodes of the show, they're going to be shown back to back, so that's going to be great, so we're really heading into the home stretch, and we're heading into the home stretch really strong. Um, I am going to give this episode an 8 out of 10, highly entertaining, definitely check it out. Something else you should check out is actually my three daughters have been watching Scream Queens, and recently, the last couple of weeks, they've been watching it with me, but that's only because I found out they watched the first eight episodes anyway, so I figured it was better that they watch it with me, and it turns out to be super, super fun watching this show with them, and them trying to work out the clues and the whodunit stuff. Um... I recorded a little review after we all watched this episode together, and I'm going to be bringing you highlights of that later on in this review. All right, so Ghost Stories, 8 out of 10, great episode, funny episode, made me want to drink a Mountain Dew. 
And real quick side note, Chad Radwell mentions having Thanksgiving with his family, including his brothers, Thad and Brad, and I really hope that we get to see this family reunion. I would love to see Chad, Thad, and Brad Radwell all together having a scene. That just sounds like money in the bank to me. All right, moving on to Killer Theories. Something that we've discussed before on this show, but I felt it was super, super pronounced tonight, was Chanel number 3 and her earmuffs. Now, we've been given a storyline reason why she wears the earmuffs, which I don't buy. Um, might be true, but I really don't buy it. No matter which way the character breaks, I, I love the character. I think she's really funny. But uh, we've been discussing the idea of that she's getting communications through these earmuffs. Um, we know the house is, has been wired by Chanel. She can watch everybody uh, through you know, hidden cameras or fiber optics or whatever, so there's no reason number three couldn't use this as use this system as well, either to listen in to others or communicate with Gigi or the other or Boone. I don't know. I definitely the way tonight's episode was staged, I do not get the sense that Chanel number three is wearing a red devil costume. I would be surprised if any of the Chanel's is under the red devil mask. But it also seems, I don't know, it seems pretty likely like she could be in league with them. Although there is another explanation, which I'll uh, get to in a minute. Um, something else that uh, occurred to me is um, Grace, you know, um, her last name's Gardner. So Grace Gardner, her initials are GG. Is that is that just uh, somebody fell asleep at the switch and didn't make the connection when they were assigning character names? Or is there something more to it? GG and GG. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, we will see what Mike has to say about that. It's been repeatedly told to us that there was a the twins were a boy and a girl. Um, Dean Dean Munch says it. It's in the painting. Um, we have been led to believe that there is a boy and a girl. That seems to be the case, but. Let me just put out there that it isn't necessarily the case. Or, uh, yeah, we find out that Boone is, uh, was fake gay. He wasn't an actual gay character. He, he was pretending to be gay. I don't know why someone would pretend to be gay to infiltrate a frat with no gay people in it. it seemed to just m be making your road rockier. Um, but hey, what do I know? But if that's the case, then maybe the alleged twin quote-unquote sister is not an actual sister. Um, and I only say that because uh, if Pete ends up resurfacing, resurfacing and we get a, uh, <clears throat> a sleepaway camp deal where it show, it's shown that he has no penis, I'm not really going to be that surprised. I'll get back to Pete in a second. So it's definitely likely that there's a, a woman, a female face under the other red devil mask, but it is not... For sure. So leave your minds open when you're deciding your final killer theory predictions. Okay, so getting back to Pete, conspicuous in his absence yet again. Uh, Wes Gardner, Grace's dad, also wasn't in this episode, but he's not as... He, I can't say that he's not as major a player. He is doesn't seem to be as major a character as Pete was supposed to be. So, uh, Oliver Hudson, Wes Gardner, not being there this week. Not that suspicious, might mean something. Pete, though, disappears for entire episodes at a time, and always during, like, super heavy Red Devil activity. Um, if it were not for the fact that they keep stressing that the other twin is a woman, I would say it was a lock to be Pete, just logistically. He's got the most free time. All these other characters are constantly around each other. You know, the Chanel's, this entire episode, it seems like they spent the entire night together, so how could one of them have snuck off to kill people? Doesn't really track, but Pete is not around a lot, so he has a lot more free time to kill people. Um... Not saying that it's him, but, uh, like I said, wouldn't be surprised if he has something to do with it. On the other hand, he's the weakest character on the show, so an episode without Pete, that's just that just helps the show. And when you've got an episode with Hardly, with no Pete, and tons of Chad Radwell, that equals success. And then, finally, I'd like to 
touch back on my multiple killers theory, which is coming to fruition, not exactly in the way I had envisioned, but some weeks ago uh, in Killer Theories, I mentioned the fact that there were going to be several different killers working, not together, but just at the same time in the same area, and maybe even using the uh, current events of the Red Devil as a smokescreen for their own crimes. And we saw that a couple of weeks ago with Dean Munch, who is a murderer and a vicious one, although she is not the Red Devil. Definitely off the suspect list. Tonight, Chanel, who... I mean, she's already killed before, but she swore that first time wasn't intentional. She murdered Hester in cold blood tonight. Also, definitely not a Red Devil but she's also a killer. So how many how many other of these surviving characters are going to be revealed to be murderers as well? I'd say at least one, maybe more than that, and that's not even counting the Red Devil reveal, which I am very much looking forward to. I had no idea, especially after the first... when I first sat down to watch the first episode of Scream Queens, I had no idea it was going to end up being this good, but... It is super funny. Definitely one of the funniest shows on TV. And from time to time, it has other qualities as well. All right, guys, welcome back to Killer Theories. I'm Mike. We're recording ours separately this week. Just had a lot of extra workflow coming in, so we just had to split things up a little bit. Uh, more than likely, I guess you've already heard Nate's. That one's going to play first, so this should start, what, about 16 minutes in. My initial thoughts on the episode, and then I'll go into killer theories. I'll try and keep my episode thoughts pretty short. I have to say, I did have a chance to listen to Nate's. I disagree with Nate on this episode. This episode was probably my least favorite episode that this show has done thus far. Yep, have to say that that's true. While I do agree with him that it was very funny, and there were quite a lot of things that I want to point out as a positive on how funny it was. Overall, this episode could have been called How to Piss Mike Off Royally, and it would have been a very apt title. As I believe Nate also pointed out in his little mini review, that the mystery, if not unimportant, is starting to become almost a joke to everyone, and I take this shit real seriously, you know? Uh, put in a lot of time on this stuff and for them to be switching up the established rules that we know in episode 9 a little bit frustrating to me I'll go into the good things first yes this was a very very funny episode things that I really liked one was the ghost stories for the most part were really fucking funny it's always good to have more Niecy Nash and we got a lot of her um, Chanel number three and Chanel number five were pretty damn awesome in this episode. I mean, everybody was pretty great all around. Uh, Chanel 3 and 5's faces. Some of just their line delivery and their faces were comedy gold. We've talked about 3 before and Billy Lord and we really like all her stuff. Chanel number 5, this was really kind of, I guess, the first episode where I was like, she is pretty damn good. Like, she's really not given much to do. Maybe that means something. But her little quips and things, like, I loved the part where she says, oh, I thought I would at least get props for coming back with an awesome story. And then it was really funny how Chanel number 1 was like, oh, if you're going to get attacked, at least get attacked in a fresh new way. Fucking hilarious. Loved it. You know, Chad and Boone finally had another scene together had to say that is one of the best moments of the show of the episode love seeing those two get you know back together it only goes to further prove and i'll get into this more in killer theories that yeah chad not the killer not a not a not the not any killer whatsoever they're seen together pretty damn awesome i really liked the night of the creeps if you haven't seen that fred decker movie from back in the 80s is about sororities and employs old 50s black and white style stories people tell like the meat hook killer stuff like that so it really reminded me a lot of night of the creeps if you haven't seen that check that out amazing awesome awesome ass movie i hate to be a dick but thank god earl gray's dead I'm sorry, I'm going to be the one to go ahead and say that. And it can't just be me, because as much as he was in all of the promotional stuff, the fact that he only, including this episode, had two scenes, just two, where he had, like, substantial dialogue, both with Zayday, both didn't really add, add up to much, and now he was just cannon fodder. I'd have to say, of all of the lines this episode, and I've heard this before, but Boone's fucking delivery killed it, 
my personal favorite line was where he's like, you like my shirt? Yeah. You know what it's made out of? No. Boyfriend material. I'm sorry. He is just the kind of douche who would say something like that. So it is fine that he does it. Boone's looks, Boone's delivery, fucking Jonas brother, all awesome, all spot on. That is also one of the reasons I'm kind of angry at this episode is we finally get Boone back and then they go and kill him. Now, okay, I can try and divorce myself. I've gotten really into this show, if you guys don't know. And I'm trying to divorce myself from disliking... Eventually, characters are going to die, and things are going to happen that I don't like, and I'm going to try and not take it personally. But I can't help it, as I'm sure you guys feel the same way. When a character dies that you care about, I'm one of those people who I watch Lost, and I would be fucking wrecked after somebody died. I don't know. I'm just that kind of person. R.I.P. Boone. I am fucking pissed that he's gone. Finally got him back, and then he has to go die. Which, by the way, just wanted to point this out. Who out there was surprised that Boone died in that scene. Oh, show of hands, exactly nobody. See, that was another thing that kind of bothered me about this episode, is it kind of, once it set its track somewhere, you kind of knew maybe because it was episode nine or this, that, I don't know, but maybe we're just really getting into the groove of the show, but was it just me that when a scene got on track, I knew where it was going to end? Niecy Nash? No, maybe I should have, but there was no suspense in her scene in the bathroom because I knew Niecy Nash, it's not her time to die. Like, I knew she would eventually be fine. No matter what she had to do to get out of it, she was going to be fine. Maybe that stressed some people out. Didn't really do much for me. And I knew, once Boone, we've seen this scene a million times where the killers, co you know, go against another and then end up in cahoots backwards. So, eh, whatever. I got some stuff to talk about in Killer Theories on that one, though. And we'll go ahead and, I guess, basically get right into that. Uh, I'll finish up the episode review by saying that even a bad episode of this show is still pretty damn good. It's probably my second least favorite, however you want to put it, it because I don't want to call them bad or worst or anything, other than the first episode, you know, the first part of Hell Week, the first episodes we got, this would be my second favorite versus that one. It's still pretty good. I would give it probably a five, possibly a six out of ten. I've watched it three times now and I start to lean more towards lower when I watched it multiple times. So yeah, I'm going to give this episode probably the first five out of ten. Uh, so I'm not sure. I think I gave the original episode a six. So yeah, maybe this is my least favorite. Anyway, what are you going to do? It's still a pretty damn good episode and you got to love it and it's hilarious. These are some of the reasons that I didn't like the episode and it all has to do with mystery. So, uh, let's rattle through a few things that we know so far then, based on this episode. We can start playing the game, who is not the Red Devil now? Because we know that there's three, huh? Do we even know that there's three? I don't even know if we can say that, but let's say that there's three. So we know it's Gigi and Boone. Now we just have to figure out who the last person is. And you know what? I bet you it's gonna, it's still gonna be more. Like, we've talked about the idea that this is gonna end up being that, like, one person isn't a killer. But anyway, who's the person under the Red Devil mask? Okay, so we know it's not Chanel number three because she walked up to Boone who was talking about Gigi. It's not Chanel number three. Now, she might be a killer, but she's not the other Red Devil. We know it's not Zayday uh, because he even mentions on the phone in that opening scene, how's Zayday doing, by the way? So it's not Zayday. And it's not Chad because there's a million reasons why it's not Chad. But when Chad meets Boone again, there's no indication and they're alone. There, There's no way that Chad is, of course, in league with this person. One thing that I put out there on Twitter and just wanted to talk about a little bit is who is the father of the bathtub baby? I put out there, place your guesses. Is it Wes or Mr. Munch? I say, is it Wes or Mr. Munch? Because truthfully, who the hell else could it be? Like seriously, send me your thoughts if there's anybody else, unless they're going to pull some bullshit like a few things they did in this episode and only give us in the next episode another person who it could be. Maybe it's Chad's father who we didn't know was there. You know, maybe they'll just keep throwing new developments at us. But as of right now, I bet we can assume that Wes is the father of the bathtub babies as it is now. Or what could make it a little bit more interesting is that it is Dean Munch's husband. He has been set up to hook up with the younger people. That would give her her reason for wanting to cover everything up. I just don't know how f much further down the line that goes, you know. But it very well could be. So anyway, some of the stuff that I thought was actually kind of lame as far as the mystery goes this episode is we find out that Boone's not gay. Why did we ever think that Boone was gay? 
Oh, because one, he was told, we were told that over and over and over. And then in episode nine, you're going to say, oh, no, we were just joking. We were, no, that rule that we set up earlier, that's totally not true. And we were just, you know, fingers crossed. You, we told you some information, but behind our back, our fingers were crossed. So, you know, we're not allowed to build any real killer theories on any of this stuff. Plus, and Nate pointed this out, but this is a big thing, is Boone says his reasoning for playing gay was so he could infiltrate the Dickie Dollars. Why the fuck would he act like he was gay to get into a uh, fraternity that didn't like gay people? That makes no sense. Feels a lot like they're backtracking. They're trying to, as the episodes are getting closer to the end, cover up, start answering all these loose questions and just doing whatever the fuck they feel like. I've been waiting since the beginning since the end of the first episode to find out how serious, and I said this, if you listen to the very first uh, Killer Theories we did, how serious do they take the mystery, because this is a comedy, how serious do they take the mystery once we find out how Boone was able to be in the morgue? In this episode, they answered that in a throwaway-ass line where it's like, I'm the one who spent four years learning to slow their breathing and heart rate to train even a coroner. Shenanigans. I call shenanigans. That is lame. I don't buy that shit. Whatever. Like I said, mostly we're watching this show for its comedy. Thank God its comedy is still spot on. This was a hilarious episode. But it's killer theory stuff. They're really starting to play nanny nanny boo boo. I was just lying to you by giving you all these clues. And personally that makes me a little bit angry. As you can imagine because I spend hours on these killer theories confirmed in this episode we've heard it now twice that there were two babies so even what we knew from the very beginning isn't true and in an episode not we're in the third act of this movie guys and they're giving us new information so as it turns out that this chick who was dead for like 15 fucking minutes straight when everybody just happened to leave the room she plopped down another baby is it boone i don't know because like most of the stuff that they brought up in this episode we're supposed to not know or know because it's all covered up by a joke. Was it Boone as the other baby? I don't know. It had Boone's smart-ass smirk on it. Okay, right on. <clears throat> anyway, as you can tell, yeah, it gets me a little bit upset about all this. Uh, so there's two babies. Okay, so boy and a girl. Unless it isn't something like a whole sleepaway camp, let's just say it's a girl. It seemed like a lot of stuff was heading towards it. It was Hester because Hester fits, you know, like the whole complexion of... Uh, Sophia Doyle and Boone seems like she could be around the same age the same complexion to be a twin fraternal twin Hester would be about the same age Hester isn't surprised when Chanel 3 starts to tell her ghost story thing rewatch that scene see all her stuff and the other thing is she's not dead she is not fucking dead we it's just, it has tricked us too many times you have to destroy the brain on a character we didn't even get like a crunch in her neck going sideways or anything so if she's not revealed at the beginning of the next episode or by the end of the next episode to be still alive 100 percent, she is still alive by the way one quick thing is the only reason she survived falling down the stairs is because she was wearing the neck brace get ready to see that cute little bit of trivia come up they're gonna go put her in the meat locker that everybody disappears from if she doesn't come back and confirm that she's alive within the next two episodes hester is the killer I can totally say that Hester is the killer but then again you never know because they keep switching stuff up and I believe Nate pointed it out very well could be Pete and they could be like oh he had a sex change oh waka waka here's a joke to make that go down smoother or you know Pete is kind of girlish you know who or I could totally see the show doing something like this like who says you need a vagina to be a girl? Couldn't you see that line showing up in the show? Anyway, everything's pointing towards Hester. If she doesn't come back, it's Hester. Let's move on. We'll see how this is going. Although, and this, of course, could get explained away. This is what I don't like. It's the cheating. where We always talk about this in Scream, and then we talked about it in this. That a cheat is when somebody just explains something away with just flippant dialogue, which is all they do in this last episode. There's one big killer thing, which still holds to my whole grace bit, that when Boone is with the Red Devil in the suite, hotel suite at the end, as he's talking alone with that Red Devil, 
Listen again to this part where he's about to show the knife. It's right after he says, and Zayde might not be as great as I thought she would. I had to bring somebody else in to listen to this line with me. He says, so where is she, G? She should have been here by now. He says it really fast and really whatever, but he doesn't say, where is Gigi? He says, where is she, G? He's calling the person under the red devil G. Now, person who I showed it to said, oh, well, maybe, yeah, he's just being like, hey, G, which wouldn't put it past the show, but that could be our big anti-Hester killer theory making it Grace, that he would call the person Grace. And can that be confirmed? I actually have the person I showed it to who doesn't watch the show. Can you confirm that that's what it was being said? Yeah, we listened to it like five or six times. And what does he say? It's where is she, comma, G. Where is she, comma, G. Not Either where is she, G. G or G short for something, you know, but that's what would, that's what he said. Yep. Okay. So, again, I've been saying it's Grace from the beginning. I would like to see it be Grace. That would make sense. A lot of stuff points to Grace. If it's not Hester, it's going to be Grace. But if Hester doesn't show up, maybe Hester will be the, uh, what do we call it? I would call it the Mr. Branson of Scream. The person that you really think's the killer right before the reveal, which is in every slasher. Now, okay, point out that I did think that it was uh, Mr. Branson in Scream, but I thought that they were going to do a subversion of that. Like, we always get our main, oh, I think it's this person, and the, pers the main chick is like, oh my god, you're the killer, and runs away from the person who's like, no, baby, come back, and then runs into the person who's like, here, come hide with me real quick. And then is like, ha ha, I'm the, I'm the killer and the boyfriend was really actually trying to be nice. We've seen this a million times. I thought the scream was going to subvert that. Maybe they'll try and subvert it here. I don't know. We'll see. So anyway, one thing that we do know is that the Red Devil, like I said, is supposed to be the other one in the tub. Supposed to be a girl and is confirmed by Gigi to be Red Devil number three's brother. So... All of it seems to line up to be Hester. If not, I say that it's Gigi. I mean, I say that it's Grace. Oh, one thing Nate specifically kind of like asked me to comment on was, do I think Grace Gardner and Gigi have anything? Uh, it kind of would fit into my killer theory, but I mean, really, I kind of don't know what that would mean. He said, would you think it was just somebody falling asleep on the typewriter? Which, you know, maybe... That's all it really could be, but it was like, uh, it's a less or more slick version of Branson, Brandon's son, being Gigi. What did you change your name to? Oh, well, I changed it to Gigi for Grace Garden. You know, it definitely could be. It only solidifies more my theory that it's going to be Grace. Really hope it will be. Uh, I'm not counting out Melanie as just like some switch hitter who comes in at the very end. Because this show is literally going to pull whatever it wants to at any given point. Uh, like Nate said, its mystery is running quite thin. But still, its comedy holds up. Altogether, good episode. Killer Theories. Uh, yeah, and I wanted to point this out that this coming next Thursday. Actually, let me check that real quick. Yes, next Thursday, the 26th. After episode 10, because they very well could reveal the killer a little early or this, that, the other. We don't like people being like, oh, I knew that's what it was, and you guys don't like that either. We always make sure before we find out who the killer is, we did this with Scream, you make your final killer theories on next week's video. Next week. Final killer theories, but it's going to have to do a lot to change my final killer theories from being either Grace or Hester. Basically, next week, I'm going to make my choice between the two, but probably going to be one of those two. Anyway, so get ready, place your bets. Next week, comment on the video your final killer theories, and then we will be going from there. Love me some Scream Queens. Can't wait for the next episode to redeem itself, if not even slightly. And we'll see you later here. We'll see you later here on Fright Flicks and Scream Queens Killer Theories. See you later next week. Bye. And just earlier today, we all watched the newest episode of Scream Queens. What did you guys think about it? It was good, and I don't really get why she know how to necessarily kill her that way. I mean. You, I bet you got like plenty of kitchen knives or something that are perfectly well, clean since you like never eat anything except cop balls and sauce. Well, well, it was funny that she told ghost stories about the toilet and then it happened to her. That was funny. Yeah. With the red toilet it's paper funny. and the blue toilet paper. Yeah. It's funny when she was using the bathroom, the 
devil came in and she just sat there saying, oh no, which one do I choose? I mean, everyone in the episode was a big idiot. I mean, you haven't even pulled on your flipping pants yet. <laughs> well, and then, and then what did she say when he was trying to drown her in the toilet? That was so funny. <laughs> I, just I just got my hair done! <laughs> <laughs> That's what she was worried about. <laughs> her hair. I mean, she's about to drown you. He was a, well, I think it was Boone. I think Boone was about to drown you in the toilet. I wonder who that other girl is, because remember how um, the Dean said they were twins, and Boone was one A boy and a girl? She said, now, to be clear, the Dean said she thought Boone was one of them. She doesn't actually know, but, like, based on everything we learned in this episode, it seems like Boone was definitely one of the twins. Yeah, he even showed it with off, with his mask Yeah, off. those are so stupid. He said, he said that. Those so stupid, because... They this? thought he was a ghost. No, um, they were so stupid and number one because they thought when Miss Bean got her flight off, they thought she was alive because the dead body was gone. Yeah. So, like I was saying, um, the reason I know Daboon was a baby because he said that when he was just a newborn baby, he was living off milk, milk scraps and food that... What sister kills a brother? A, a, a psychotic path who was raised by another psychotic path who taught them how to re murder some other psychotic paths. Stop saying. Well, um, if Zayn angry thing. Because she stabbed a fork into his hand, he's like, oh, this is uh, just a mark, and I'm going to jump out a window. Okay, so Boone is definitely one of the Red Devils, and it looks like he was raised by Gigi. As was the his twin sister. It's supposed to be. Do we have any idea who his twin sister could be? Really? It could be Chanel Goo. because, like, she was still posting after she was dead. Mm-hmm. And she kind of did look like Boo, to be honest. Okay. Um, it's weird that they're so stupid and. So, like, really stupid. Particularly the cops. The cops yeah. are really dumb. Yeah, yeah, that guy, he is, like, the stupidest cop, st cop ever. All he, all he did was hire a guy named Dope. Dope is a... Dope means, like, a word for a stupid people. <laughs> and they thought there was a flipping ghost in the house. I mean, so stupid. Well, I wonder what the what devil is. It could be Gigi. I, that's a second word. Right. Yeah. If, if it was Chad, why would he chop up his old friend's arms? The first thing he says to him is, I like your haircut. Well, he doesn't ask any questions. Well, well, thanks, man. Well, in it, why would, uh, why would that ice cream cone be happy even though know, the wood dove's going to kill him? That is a great question. You so, don't make suits with brownies. Tell me, I forget, which Chanel is it who always wears the earmuffs? Oh, that's Chanel, Chanel number, number three. three. It's because her boyfriend, he loved his her oh, ears so ears. much, and when she broke up with him, she he threatened if she if he would no, ever see the ears right. again, mm -hmm. then she, he would try Oh, that, that's because she loved him. Remember how she said anyone she loved would either die or go crazy? Uh -huh. And so he went crazy, and he said that he would... Where they go and drive, when they find the devil's lair, and they go in, and then they see that his costume laid out all his. I saw a um, I saw a uh, the microphone thingy uh, walkie-talkie on there. Did you? Because I saw what I I there was a walkie-talkie on the table. Oh yeah. I mean, there's more than one than more than two devils. Because in the oh, lair yeah. there was like fi five masks and five red capes well, and oh, five Violet. suits. You know um. Some some of the girls kind of take up a fight. Remember when the devil got his, like, ugh. because, yeah. And I wonder why P had that devil's costume in it his. It was the mascot. Hey. His devil's costume in the thing. But clearly, the, the next, like, the next episode, a different guy was wearing the costume. Ew. And is he kiss crazy? Why, I wonder why that, that old lady, she... She's like so creepy 
easy paints. I paint them all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she does. She paints, and she drew a painting of Gigi holding twins, a boy and a girl. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, that does click. <laughs> okay, so um, what was your favorite part about tonight's episode? What was the, the what was your favorite part? Of it? I like I I like I liked um, the part when uh, I kind of liked the part when um, Boom disappears out of nowhere. He's in the, he's in the door I, and then he's like stop and then she just like pushes him. I, I think well, it's funny. Yeah. Like, well, well, like first Boom pops out, the Gigi pops out, and then they push him out of the window and then well, he's gone. Well, I like in this I like two parts in this episode. Well, um. Well, she said, why is there so many... T- okay, can you stop talking about toilets? Yeah, One. can you stop talking about toilets? Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, and the second part is, I just got my hair dyed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my favorite part is when the stories um, came real, and then they were, be- and they were being so stupid about it. Like she kicked him in the crotch because she because he was trying to help her, and then she was just sitting there like, "Oh no, which one do I choose? I'm gonna die! I just got my hair wet! No!" <laughs> I mean, just go go flipping away. I mean, the, the Red Devil must have heard that story. Uh, my favorite part, for what it's worth, was probably the thing that made me laugh the hardest when was when Chad was talking to Chanel about his, the haunted house where they were going to go have Thanksgiving. He's like, yeah, you know, sometimes the furniture screams or or you'll crack open an ice-cold Mountain Dew and drink it and it'll, like, turn into blood. Oh, babe, we're going to have the dopest time. <laughs> that made me laugh really hard, so that was probably my favorite part of it. Um, does anybody have a guess on who the other Red Devil is? You, you think it should... Violet, you said you think it may be Chanel number two? No, like, Savannah said that. Like she faked her death? Or Chanel, it, it could be Chanel number three. Yeah, okay. Because she's never really right into the Red, red Devil. You, it's super hard to guess, so if you don't have a guess, I that's know, okay. I know, it could be One person Chan- who was definitely not it. It could be the, um, Chanel number sh- six. It could. She's oh, you know what? You missed the end of the episode. She died. Oh. Chanel number one threw her down the steps. Because she faked that she was pregnant, so Chad, yeah. so Chad. Like, um, one person that is not it, the old lady who killed, chopped up her husband, and what's her name? Dean Munch. Yeah, Dean Munch is not it, because when the baby was in the bathtub, she was there. Yeah, no, it's, she's, she's definitely not it, so. Okay, that wraps up this week's Hensley family discussion about Scream Queens. But I'm a penguin. Yes. So uh, a dad, two daughters, and a penguin will be back next week.